Good, Good morning, morning Lancaster, Lancaster Catholic. Catholic. I'm Jenna Danielson. And I'm Mitchell Rochester. Today is Friday, January 12th. This is what you need to know. Next week is devoted to midterm exams. Here is some transportation information you need to know. If you ride district school buses, you will be picked up at your regular 3 p.m. times, except those who ride Holy Trinity bus, Schultz bus number 28, Elizabethtown bus, and Ephraim bus number 167. You will be picked up at 12.15. If you have any questions, see Mrs. Shomo. Chances are, you'll work up an appetite taking all those tests. Well, FBLA is once again operating its concession stand outside the cafeteria. It's open after the second exam until the end of the last exam. Pizza, walking tacos, hot dogs, soft pretzels, candy and drinks are just a few things on their menu. We have some, something special for you today. The broadcasting class has been putting together some technology reports we thought you'd be interested in the new year. Mitchell, what'd you get for Christmas? I got a toy robot. Did you know that robots are becoming strangely similar to humans? Here's Megan's It Fell with the story. Robots are becoming more and more like us, especially one robot. Her name is Sophia. Being human must be truly amazing. I can do many things that humans do, but I can only dream of really being human. She may not have a human heart or brain, but she does have citizenship in Saudi Arabia. Yes, that's right, a robot has been granted citizenship. That's because Sophia is not like any other robot. She looks much like a human and can communicate naturally using facial expressions and gestures. She's the creation of former Disney Imagineer David Hansen. His goal was to create a bot that could help the elderly with personal care. Sophia is already a celebrity. She's appeared on The Tonight Show and several international media conferences. So how much time before robots like Sophia are living among us? I'm Megan Zipfell. The internet as we know it may be slowing down for good. Andrew Strummager is here with some more information on net neutrality. The internet as we know it is changing. The Federal Communications Commission repealed an Obama era policy known as net neutrality. The chair votes aye. The item is adopted with editorial privileges granted as requested. This is our freedom to access the web without restrictions. The repeal allows companies like Comcast and AT&T to choose whether to block or slow certain websites. In protest of the repeal, we'll be filing a claim to stop the FCC's leadership from doing any further damage to the internet and our economy. New York's Attorney General says he would lead a multi-state lawsuit against the FCC. A Republican Congresswoman also unveiled the Open Internet Preservation Act to restore some of net neutrality. While the repeal is in effect, the fight is still on for our internet freedom. I'm Andrew Schumcher. Is your older iPhone not working as fast as it once was? Sebastian Lewis is here with the reason why. Apple has been pushing out upgrades that slow older iPhones. This causes the battery to die faster and the phone to not run as fast as it did when it was first put on shelves. Apple is claiming that upgrades are designed to slow down the phone to preserve its battery life. Consumers say it was Apple's way of getting them to buy a new phone. Even though Apple did apologize, people are still suing them. According to an analyst with Creative Strategies, the only thing Apple did wrong was not being transparent enough. And in attempts to right its wrongs, Apple has cut the price of replacement batteries from $79 to $29. I'm Sebastian Lewis. Speaking of smartphones and devices, Corinne Perisky tells us about some new advances this year that hit closer to home. The International Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas is introducing the idea of smart homes. Here's the concept. A house would contain multiple internet-connected accessories, such as light bulbs, thermostats, and security systems. They would all be controlled through voice-powered virtual assistants. Imagine just telling your house to turn on the lights or to turn up the heat. While package systems aren't available yet, you can purchase individual devices which can sync to each other, such as light bulbs and security systems. These products run from $68 all the way to $700. I'm Corinne Perisky. The battle is on between artificial intelligence devices that you can add in your home. Claire Wolf has the details. The latest release of the Google Home is sparking a debate. Is it better than the Amazon Echo, its biggest competitor? The Google device offers features including walking through multiple recipes and responding to multiple orders. It can even change the bass and treble level for the song that you're listening to. 
The Google Home Mini and Max can also match all the features of Amazon Echo, but in a smaller size. Business Insider says that the Amazon Echo is the perfect choice if you're looking for a better overall speaker and has the best smart home support. The deciding factor could be the price. Google Home is $129, while the Amazon Echo is only $79. So check them out and see what you think. I'm Claire Wolf. In 2018, Hogwarts and the Haunted Mansions may no longer be the only places with animated pictures. Meredith the Board explains. High-tech motion capture techniques are allowing computer scientists to take a still photo and animate it. This technology makes it possible to change someone's expression to happiness, anger, or shock. They can even add details like teeth that weren't showing in the original picture. Being able to manipulate the face will make it harder and harder to tell the difference between fake and real. On the other hand, they're hoping it may lead to animated profile pictures or even a quick smile from your picture when someone likes it. So will this new technology bring fun, interactive updates to social media or make faking photos easier than ever? I guess we'll find out. I'm Meredith DeBoard. Have you been wondering what the tech world may come up with this year? Helena Ramos is here to introduce you to a new friend. She, he, sure. Meet Curry. Curry is a robot for the home and can perform a whole lot of tasks. Curry's gender is whatever fits best in your home. Curry can take pictures with its eyes automatically for you to capture moments. It can wake you up in the morning, greet you when you come home at night, and even be the life of the party with its built-in speakers. The robot memorizes the floor plan of your house and can navigate on its own. Despite its warm and welcome display, I don't think I'm ready for this type of technology in my house. But if you think you are, Curry comes out in the spring and will cost $899. I'm Helena Ramos. 2018 has the future of listening to music. Gabrielle Vonner is here with the details. Samsung is introducing a new line of products called S-Ray. This is three different speakers allowing you to listen to music without wearing any headphones. But get this, no one else can hear it. One device you wear around your neck. The revolutionary sound isolation technology is designed to beam sound directly to your ear. Samsung says it wants people to be able to listen to music while still being able to hear the world around them. Samsung hasn't actually released any of the devices to the public yet, but the big reveal happened just this week at CES 2018, a technology expo in Las Vegas. I'm Gabriella Vonner. We know that drones deliver pizza and packages, but Claire Longenecker explains how drones can also save lives. Silicon Valley Robotics Company, Zipline, has developed a delivery system that gets medication and life-saving supplies to their destination in half the time. The drone can travel up to 60 miles per hour and will drop supplies to clinics on remote parts of Africa. These drones have been nicknamed Uber for Blood. That's because of the extreme need of blood for women after childbirth in Rwanda and other East African countries. The California-based Zipline isn't the only medical delivery system using drones, but it's the first in the world to offer regular service in underdeveloped African nations where the mortality rates remain high. I'm Claire Longenecker. There's your information for next week. Have a great weekend, Crusaders. Crusaders.